Hello, <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is November 26th, it's Friday. You're watching On Top and Hot, brought to you by Penny Boys. Penny Boys brings you those PB alerts everybody loves, but you gotta check out PBU. Penny Boys University, honestly, will give you an education that can not only change your finances, but probably change your life. He gads. So what do I do here at On Top and Hot? I look at stocks on the OTC market and penny stocks that, well, maybe we should be looking at. Today, I was just scrounging around anywhere and everywhere looking for stocks that were catching attention. Some were, well, setting up for potential plays. Others had things in the mix. So I'm just going to show you what I found, and we'll see if there's anything you want to put on your list. Come on. Now we're going to start most of this due diligence, this DD on the OTC market for these OTC stocks. This is the only site where FINRA and the SEC put information for investors to find so that the companies can be transparent since there are filing issues with OTC companies. So why go to Google looking for where the information is? This is where they put it, the OTCmarkets.com. First stock we are looking at here is ASPZ Asia Properties Inc. They finished today just under 14 cents and just under 180% gains. It was a wicked day on the market today and these people showed us how it's done. 180% gains. They are pink limited. Now this means they're late filing something and normally it's a financial and in this case it was. That's right, was. They were late filing September's quarterly report they just filed it two days ago and it hasn't got into the system yet. Going current is a catalyst. So once this jumps up to current, that will help this stock. God only knows how much, but it will help. They have a verified profile and a transfer agent. So everything else looks good on this stock. So what are they about? Well, Asia Properties Inc., contrary to their name, is a Wyoming USA domicile junior mining company. They acquire gold claims and mines. And this is where it gets a little different. They then scrutinize them on the blockchain via ICOs and STOs, selling coins to, well, it's another way to back their investment and get a whole different way of payment. The company will then list these tokens on highly liquid exchanges such as Uniswap and Binance. So they've got a few things going here. Uh, what is the excitement wrapped around this company today? Wow. Normally they only do 24,000 shares. Today they did 1,500% more. 15 times more, 342,000. Now that's not a huge number of shares, but relatively speaking, they've got a lot of a people's attention today. What is their share structure? Not bad at all, 59 million. Yeah, we've seen lower, but this is a real good share count, especially when they got two billion that they could put on the market. They've only got 71 million on the market. I like companies that don't get greedy and throw everything out there and take away all the shareholder value. What else can we see here? How about their financials? Are they making any money? Well, no, doesn't say they're making a bloody thing here at all. And we've just looked at their disclosures. So how about their news? Well, let's see here. Uh, the news goes all the way back to 2007. So let's just jump up to 2001. Uh, ASPZ forms Asia Gold LLC in Alaska. They buy Bering Sea Clinker to produce NFTs. They're making their mark. ASPZ is now pink current. That was in September. That was the last filing that they then became late on. They got a habit of being late, don't they? And then ASPZ updates their website. And they did that two weeks ago. So what's going on right now? Well, I think it's all about going current. That's what I think is going on. I didn't find any information here. Let's go over to Twitter and see what we can find over here for Twitter. All right, we have dollar sign ASPZ on top. This gives us the most popular ones. See if we have any information. ASPZ 8K after three years. That's true, I did see that uh, there was no 8K if we come over here two disclosures, you can see that there was a big bald spot here from 2018 to 2021. 
They had nothing. And they came out with an 8K. And I haven't actually looked at this 8K. They're pretty brief and short. Let's see, on March 26, 2021, Asia Properties received notification from 8th Judicial District Court that the company had succeeded in obtaining a court order, notice to cancel and return 1.5 billion common shares improperly issued. So that happened and what you see on the chart <laughs> the chart jumped 700 percent just on that news right there that 8k right there when it came out it jumped didn't stay there very long but it jumped and that's really all we got going here is that the company has been silent and now their first 8k came out showed a lot of interest then you've got some more things happening. They get pink, they get current, then they got late again, and now they're going current. And we see a huge jump without any news. Let's go take a look at that chart and see what it shows us. So we're looking at the ASPZ chart. That is one year, one day, and we're looking at it on TOS, Think or Swim. I got this whole thing for free. I've never had to pay a dime for it. I signed up for TD Ameritrade, which was free. They gave it to me. You don't have to deposit any money with them. You don't even have to trade with them. I do, it's my account, but you don't have to. But you can still use this nice trading platform for free. Think or Swim from TD Ameritrade. All right, like I said, this is a year. I broke it back to a year so I could show you this jump right there. That is May 20th. That's the day the 8K came out that they said they had been granted the right to pull off 1.5 billion shares. And I don't know if it made a difference to the share count, but you see the share count is down to just under 60 million shares. And I want you to look at those bounces. Now we are on a day. These are one day bounces. This bounce here goes from eight and a half up to, uh, that's about 100% bounce. That's 100% bounce, 70, 50, 50. So let's come in on the, well, let's look at a four hour. You can see she was all the way down here at two cents. She hit a high of 27 cents back here on August and she has fallen very strong, very hard. There was nothing going on. Maybe this is even when, well, let's see, August. So she probably went not current somewhere in here. Probably stopped trading. I'm gonna come in on 20 days. Let's see what it looks like here. All right, very thin trading. I bet you we see some bald spots here. 11.3, 11.5, 11.8, 9, 10, 11, 11, no, I don't see anything missing here. But she definitely fell from her high of 24 cents all the way down to four cents and now it's back up to 13 cents. So it's bouncing off of that low bubble and she's just about to go current. Any catalyst on top of a low bubble gives you a double, triple effect easily. So we've just had a crossover here. Now we are on the one hour. The crossover on the MACD, everything looks strong. Let's come in on that five day, five minutes. See if this looks good. Now this all comes down to her going current. As soon as she goes current, this is probably gonna get a bounce. People seem to be quite excited about this company doing things, anything, because it had been quiet for so long. So the day started off way down here. It closed at just under a nickel. And as soon as it opened up, it opened up at just under eight cents. So it jumped three cents just there in the opening of the market, fast. You don't even see any middle ground here. I'll break that down into a minute. Let's see how that actually breaks down. Yeah, see that? Three minutes or three cents in one minute. Boom. There was no negotiation. That's just where the price went. Then it jumped up to nine cents, nine and a half, kicked up here to almost 12 cents, 13 cents, and it's holding 13 cents. This looks good. This looks good. And if it gets that bump, if it gets that wee bit of bump that it needs from going current, you could see this hit, I don't know, 15, 17, 20 cents the way it's bouncing. Remember, this has a small float. Speaking of, let's back out to that one hour chart. All right, so just in this day, just today, now is this today, half a day? Uh, yeah, it is, this is just a half a day. So in an hour, it went from nine cents to 14 cents. That is almost a 50% gain right there just right there in an hour. 
So she does have a low float, not super low, but low enough to show up on these charts with the volume she gets, they get bounces. And if it gets any volume with 60 million shares off of the news that just went current, you got yourself some money. Don't stick around, take that profit, move on to the next one. All right, let's go see the next one I got. This is Fourth Wave Energy Inc, F-W-A-V. Now to be honest, I don't know a lot about this company, but to be completely honest, I don't know much about most of the companies we look at. And when I trade them, I don't know as much as I actually show you. The truth of the matter is, if you're only gonna be trading a company for one day or a couple hours or a few minutes, you don't really need to know everything about the company. The fundamentals aren't important, they're not gonna matter. The management, whatever trouble they got into or whatever awards they've gotten, isn't gonna matter. All that matters is, is the stock gonna move from point A to point B? And it's not gonna take long to do that and all those factors won't make any difference. So you don't have to do a lot of DD, just enough to see is there catalyst, cause, reason, and are the technicals strong for this stock to move? And that's all we're looking for. So when we are looking at FWAV, I see they had 50% gains today. That got my attention. They are at 57 cents. They are on the QB market. That is the better market on the OTC. They have to audit all of their financials so they're more transparent. Verified profile and a transfer agent, so they're in good shape. So what does this company do? Well, here in the description, they tell us that Fourth Wave Energy is a clean tech company with divisions in green zero carbon alternative energy. Utilizing our team and knowledge, we are harnessing the earth and the sun through technology to provide a carbon free future. Okay, so sounds like they're into solar business or something like that, or at least part of it. So what was the excitement around them? About 300% worth, they normally do 67,000 shares, did 208,000, three times as much volume today. And their share count is beautiful look at that 14 million shares yes yes we do have 14 million shares that's great i sure hope that the chart shows that this has power i love a good low float so what are their financials they're supposed to be audited but they're not auditing anything because they got nothing except expenses okay that's a little disconcerting and their disclosures how are they doing um, they just had a 10Q come out. That is a quarterly financial report that just came out uh, four days ago, so that is fresh. I don't see anything else here though, so let's go jump on the news. Uh, no new news, nope. Newest news they got is back here till May of 2021. It said that GeoSolar Technologies files an S1 registration for the spinoff from Fourth Wave Energy. Geo, so Geotechnologies was being spun off from Fourth Wave because this is Fourth Wave. They didn't get spun off, so I guess they spun out GeoSolar. I don't know anything about that. We may have to check into that later. Right now, though, you're probably wondering, so what are we looking at this for? We've got no financials. We've got no news. What's up? Well, what I found was over on Twitter. Twitter had some interesting information, and it looks like it's moved for us. Okay, the first thing I can tell you is that, oh good, there we go, at the end of the day today, and I saw this happen because I was looking for stocks to talk to you about, and I was actually looking at this stock when it happened. The end of the day, somebody spent $100,000 at 50% higher than the price was. What's up with that? And that's what everybody's gonna be asking. This is Friday in the afternoon, end of the day. Monday, there's gonna be a lot of hype around this. So I expect there to be some attention paid Monday morning, and hopefully you'll be part of that attention. The other piece of news is right here. This comes from that 10Q that I just pointed out to you. Love Twitter, man. These people jump into these things and they'll dissect it and pull pieces out and throw them on the table so you and I don't have to go digging around. We can just sort through what they show us. And this is one of them. The company expects to execute a definitive merger agreement with Edge Mode Inc., a Wyoming corporation, on or before December 31st, 2021. 
So we got a deal right there about a month away that we have just been told about and it's not in the news. It's not a press release. You get this from going into the files. So somebody found this for us and now we know. So who is Edge Mode? Well, I pulled up their website here. It says that Edge Mode is a leading mining and high performance computing technology company. They're talking about crypto mining, not gold mining. The fastest growing operator in the world with over 600 megawatts of forecasted mining and compute capacity coming online from January 2022. Now I've gone through this site and as I said, I don't know a lot about these sites. I don't know a lot about these companies. I just touch and go on them, but I see the pictures. I see all the solar and they've just told us that they're into solar. So I immediately presume that they are doing crypto mining using solar energy, which is how you would do green tech. But in saying that, they don't say that. None of the pages I went through say a bloody thing about mining using solar energy. Now, it might be in one of the pieces of news, though we didn't see any current news. But the pictures here show it. So one puts A and B together and you think, oh, they're mining using solar. So that's the presumption, but without them actually saying it, that's all it is, is a presumption. However, we do see here in their 10Q, they are planning on doing a merger and it is a fact that somebody spent $100,000 today. So let's go check out that chart and see what it looks like. So there is the six month, four hour chart for FWAV. And I was just doing some research because I always like to know why a stock jumped. And there was a huge jump here as we can see, and this happened on uh, September 2nd. So I went looking around to see what happened and there was an 8K just a couple of days before, I think it was this day here, that was filed. And you can see hardly anything happened between the filing and this jump, but there's no news. All there is is that filing and that filing is the letter of intent for edge mode. That's right. The deal they just closed, this big jump here is the same reason this jump. This was a letter of intent, just the idea that they were going to do it. And today they did it. So it is a big deal. You can see how much attention is wrapped around this, this mining company. So we've had a big jump here that went a lot higher than we've gotten here. A lot higher could be room to grow. We are down here at 57 cents. The high was at 81 cents. All right, so you can see that from that time, it has stayed high. I mean, it fell, it was up at this point earlier. We don't know the ancient history of this company, but from this point, it's pretty much held its gains here, lifted up, and now it's poked again. Now let's come in and take a look at that last sale. All right, right here we've got, uh, all right, uh, five minutes, trying to get the volume here. Where is the volume? I can't see it. There it is, 117,000 shares and uh, 25,000 shares. So you had one purchase here that obviously you, you had a small one there and th this one's for 50,000. So you had 50,000, 117,000, and then 25,000. That's 50,000? Sure is. Yep. Yep, that's 50,125. And it's climbing, folks. It's climbing. And it's climbing fast. Very fast. MACD has taken off. The RSI is torched right now. Just screaming hot. Woo! All right, let's look at the one minute. Let's see how that played out. Every minute was going up except this one. Funny, the dip is on the wrong side of the high. <laughs> but we hit a high here and it didn't pull away from the high. It is still sitting there with all of the energy pent up. I really like this from Monday. I think you need to put FWAV. Watch this puppy. That big 100K poke is gonna get a lot of people wondering what's going on and they're gonna be in line. And if there is any, any green show up, as soon as that bell goes off, I think everybody's gonna take it as a sign of a big surge and it's gonna pop. Remember, if you're gonna play a morning bounce, which is all I think this is good for, you wanna get out at 20% or above. And so I'm saying, as soon as you see it go above, it can move very fast going up and it can come down very fast. So don't get greedy. If it goes over 20%, look, take it. It's going 20, 30, 40, just sell. Just sell it. Yeah, it might still be climbing, but you're going to get 
40, 50, 60% of whatever you invested without any more stress. It may go higher, but folks, if you can do that every day, just take your gains when you see them and forget about growth. You won't get trapped. You won't get bared out. You won't lose your money. You'll always be coming out ahead, whether it keeps going or not. Don't get greedy. So this one should be on your list for Monday. Going to be on my list for sure. DRCR, we've looked at this a couple of times. This is Dear Cashmere Holdings, and no, their name doesn't sound like anything like what they do. They're into gambling and sports betting. They've got a couple of hot apps, which we'll touch on to. They finished today at $1.71 with only 11% gains, but it's been regular gains back on top of back. They are pink current, and they got all their green tick marks, so they're in good shape. Relative volume, bad. Today, they only did half as much as they normally do. Not good for them, or at least it looks that way, right? Their share structure, now this is good. We really like this. Don't pay any mind to this. The guy behind the curtain is not for real. This is it, eight million shares. Eight million, that's all this company has in its float, eight million. When volume hits this stock, it moves. Keep that in mind. All right, financials. You would expect to see some money here, but we got a bald spot. There's a gap. So I do remember that they had a gap here and we're waiting for income to start with everything that's going on, which I'm gonna touch on to. I know there's no new disclosures, so let's jump over here to the news. Now, I've covered this news before and without having to go all through it, we can look at this update and it pretty much covers the catalyst and what you need to know about this company. Now, this came out on the 22nd, so this was four days ago. Dear Cashmere Holding Company, known as Swiftly Global, is a technology company focused on groundbreaking solutions in the financial and sports betting sectors. The company has developed two disruptive mobile apps for sports prediction and digital wallets, which both encompass artificial intelligence, cryptocurrency, and blockchain transactions. All hot all up to date and they have patents filed for these new applications so everything is fresh this is set up like a thanksgiving dinner they tell us that the swiftly prediction app offers betting opportunities on every major global sports including nfl nhl nba football they mean soccer uh cricket rugby golf boxing ufc tennis <laughs> horse racing, motor racing, snooker, and more. And if I remember from my DD originally, they even have live TV like uh, uh, Survivor and uh, Love Island or whatever the heck that's called. Um, it tells us here that to allow legal participation, Swiftly has several gambling licenses pending in various regions around the world and intends to complete global license within 12 months. The Caraco license, which is no little license, that's not one country, it's a whole bunch of countries, is the first license which is expected very soon. The application and compliance process has been completed and swiftly now only awaits physical certification to be delivered, which is expected very soon. That sounds very imminent, doesn't it? The Caraccio license covers most of the world's markets less mainstream as they may be, but nonetheless very important sizable markets such as Africa, India, and most of Europe, which approximately is 3.3 billion people. So yeah, they may not be mainstream, but 3.3 billion people who like to gamble, it's a good start. And they're gonna get the other licenses. So they've got the app which monitors what you watch, what you're interested in, how you bet, and then comes up with bets you might come up with on your own and just throws them up there for you. And with a swipe left or a swipe right, you yes or no that bet just that quick. And then you've got your wallet. It doesn't just work with betting. It works with paying your bills or buying cryptos. So it's got a lot going on for it. And on November 19th, we got the same news a wee bit early. This came from the company themselves on their Twitter account, Swifty Global, DRCR. He said, some little birdie told me our first gambling license is just around the corner. Swiftly will soon be a household name. New update early next week. A little tease there. And then you got the news on top of that on the 22nd. Let's go take a look at that chart and see how they're working that chart. 
All right, so there you go, DRCR, that actually is the five day, five minute. And that low bubble right there is on the 19th. That is when the tweet came out as well. Now, I sometimes think these guys know exactly what I know, that when a low bubble comes, it's a ball bouncing, and when it bounces up, if you kick it, you can get a higher bounce out of it. And I think they come and drop news or drop tweets on purpose right behind a low bubble, which I'm not complaining about, but that's what's happened here. So on the 19th, we hit a low bubble. He goes and tweets. You got to remember, it was the 22nd, which is... Uh, uh this day here so that what we we had the weekend there you go you got the weekend here so he tweeted it started to bounce on friday trying to recover after a big drop big drop hit that low bubble then you get the 22nd news the 23rd it climbs the 24th it pretty much goes sideways but look in the morning it jumped it jumped very high set a standard up there Boing. Oh, wrong line. <laughs> Supposed to go this way. And we got a high now just above that. And that high got set today. And then it fell, kind of like this one. Up, down, up, down. But she is climbing. Easily or the hard way, she is climbing. So we've got a teaser from the company themselves, maybe the CEO, right? That they got news coming, that the licenses are coming, and then their apps are gonna be launched and they're gonna be making money. So they got all these soft and hard catalysts right around this thing right now. And your 200 shows on the five minutes she is coming around for growth. We have an imminent crossover right here sitting on the signal line and the pop-up of the RSI is strong there. Looking at the last, the way the day ended, small, medium, large, baby bear, mama bear, papa bear, she was climbing. She was breaking her 10 and going above the 20, so she has potential. She looks like she wants to continue to growth. I'm not saying she's going to be a bouncer on Monday. I'm saying that she could be a climber. She could be a climber, find that good entry point. Let's see what she looks like backing up again. All right, so she was keeping about 50% easily. She's right around the 50. Let me see, from 18 down to, what was that, 15? So you're going to be at about, about right there. Yeah, right. I did it again. All right, let me get this one right this time. That's supposed to go that way. There we go. <laughs> All right, that, that'll tell me we've been here before. So it is sitting on the 50. It came down, bounced off the 50 SMA. I call that my 50 because it's half of the surge. Don't get confused. This is the 50 SMA. It has just seemingly bounced off of that, coming to the 50 mark, which is the strong. You want to be on top of that. That's where it needs to sit to continue growing. And that, that's not just me. That's an algorithmic thing. It needs to be above that. And it's trying to right now. So I would watch this to get on top. If it gets on top, there's a very good likelihood that this is going to continue to grow. If it gets over top of 172, hits 173, I think she's off and running. All right, we got another one? I think we do. And the last one we're looking at is a medical company. Uh, they may get an extra punch from what happened today. This is T-O-M-D-F, Todos Medical. They closed the day out at eight cents with 44% gains. Uh, this is a QB tier company. They're the better tier, so you can count on the transparency with this sort of company. Transfer agent verified. Don't see a verified profile, but it doesn't seem to be bothering them. So what was the relative volume today? Eh, about three times as much as normal. So something was going on. I mean, just all of a sudden you have three times as much. It isn't just a coincidence. What is their share count? Not good, not bad. About, about 100 million, roughly 100 million shares. We can live with that. We got any money coming in here? Just here recently. Goodness, something has definitely changed. Now, I know the company has just gotten a couple drugs onto the market. They got a couple more drugs in the pipeline. So, obviously, that's made a difference. They have 5.2 million. You got to put three zeros behind that. So, last year, out of nowhere, they come up with $5.2 million. So, at least we know they're making money. We got anything standing out here on disclosures? Uh, 8K, uh, that was two weeks ago. I don't think that would have anything to do with now. 
And okay, let's go see about the news. All right, as you can see, they've got lots of news here. I mean, th this is all just this month. <laughs> all of this news is just this month. They've got all sorts of things going on with these antibody and antiviral drugs, which are huge. I mean, it's huge, big time. But we're going to zoom in on why they jumped today and why we could probably get another day of bounce out of this. So we're jumping into the news that came out today, 1124. All right, it says that Totals Medical announces exclusive license and distribution agreement with T-Cell Protect Helis from Tolavid products covering 30 countries in Europe. The agreement calls for a minimum of a half a million bottles to be sold in the next 18 months of their new drug they got. And T-Cell Protect will also invest a million euros into one of their drugs, 3CL Protease Inhibiting Antiviral Drug Candidate. They're going to help support that through its trials right now. So that is the news. And they tell us a little bit down here that initially they're buying uh, 50,000 bottles, though they plan on selling a half a million over the next 18 months. The 50,000 is going to meet the demand for the initial rollout in 11,000 stores in Greece. And they're working in a lot of different countries. So this could get rather big for them. That's why I think there could be a bounce. We could see some more information. Uh, just a feeling. But let's go look at the chart and see what the technicals show. See if there's any leftover momentum or velocity for Monday. Very interesting chart for TOMDF. That is six month, four hours. It's had a lot of activity, but it's pretty much riding below that 200 for most of it. Then you had a very strong kick here. And I think you deserve to see that right here 823 that's the day totals medical ceo to appear on fox business network yarny company to discuss the company's launch of cpas naturalizing antibodies and this is also another piece of news came out that day totals medical completes validation of cpas neutralizing antibody blood test at Provista Diagnostics to qualify and monitor key biomakers of COVID-19 immunity. And that caused all of that. Now, whether it was the Fox News that actually did it, because a lot more people wanted to invest in it as soon as they heard about it on TV, that happens a lot. Or just a lot of people wanted to invest because the news was big, because it's, it's a great drug that's passed a milestone. In either case, she has pretty much hung up in there, had a deep dive, took it all back, don't even know why, ne needed something obviously here, but then look at today, or at least look at this time period. We have severely jumped above any high that we have ever had. So far above them now that we are in a new territory. Need to pay attention. So let's come in on, let's look at 20 days. Let's see how 20 days looks. All right, looks like we were flat until what would you know about that? Come on, let's go back one month. I want to see if that's the same low bubble. All right, no. So she has fallen a lot and she is now coming back. How much further do I have to go? I'm not going to go any further back. We're just going to stop there. You can see she pretty much is running flat. I mean, to hit that low was just a sneaky bit lower. But she was running flat until the first of this month when all the news came up. Remember I said this is all from November. Well, it made a difference obviously because it has been slowly climbing. Now, it has been doing a lot of sideways action. There is no doubt here. The volume has been intense, but the last three days have strongly increased in volume, as has the price increase. It is jumping a little bit, a lot of bit, and a whole bloody bunch. <laughs> so, we have a strong indicators down at the bottom for the MACD and the RSI. They are just a, a huge flood and lots of fire. Red and blue everywhere. The volume is kicking. Everything is above the 200. It is just soaring right now. Uh, let's come down to the five minute, five day. All right, every day it has been growing. Not much, but it is picking up momentum. This doesn't look like much of a growth, but it is. All right, it may have closed a little lower. I didn't see that. But you can see this was just at the same height right there. Hmm. 
And then we got up a little bit higher. She's climbing now, folks. She's starting to stair step. Boom, 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 boom. And these steps are getting quite big. This looks very good. Everything looks very strong. The end of the day, let's come in on that. Let me get rid of this tool so I don't draw any more lines. Shoof. Lots of volume. One, two, three, four, five, six. Look at this. It's just strong. Up, up, up. Hit a high bubble. Slamming onto that high. Didn't pull back yet. I think we're going to see a run on Monday. And this could just continue climbing too. Though I'd watch for a 10 o'clock pullback. What are her pullbacks? Let me just take a bit of a look here. She doesn't have much of a pullback. Is that 10 o'clock? Yeah, that's 10.05 right there. I told you, 10, 10.05, most stocks will pull back. And just a pullback. You know, it looks scary, but that's why I want out. Because I don't know if that's going to stop falling or if it's going to keep falling. This one fell and continued on. But you could have sold here, right? It fell. And buy back in here virtually at the same price, but still lower. And you've gotten some money. And if it even came down lower and started climbing, you could have got a better deal. So there's no reason to ride every dip out when you know it's probably going to dip at 10 in the morning. Take your gains at 9.55, 10. Get out. See what it does over the next 10, 15 minutes. Here was 30 minutes. And then decide. You may want in at a better price and keep some money or buy more shares. So I'd keep my eye on TOMDF for Monday. A lot of power, a lot of motivation, a lot of extra energy. Ended on a high bubble. It all looks good. No new news, but drugs, drugs can run for days. Why miss out on two more days of running? Because you thought it hit a ceiling. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Watch it in the morning Monday. Few more stocks for you to consider. Nothing super duper, nothing explosive, but that's not how you make money. You make money by taking gains when gains are given and then get out before they take them away. And there's many plays right there that can make you some money. Just watch them and get in at the right time. Ride that momentum, that surge, that bounce, that PR, and then get out. These aren't investments, these are plays. Play with them safely, but don't hang around too long. It's like a casino. The longer you stay and play, the more you lose. Get in, get your money, get out. Remember folks, do your own DD on any stock I show you. Your DD is the most important because it's your money. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you folks.